Greetings, dear friends. I present your attention to the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Audi A5 AT. The basic version of the A5 is a front-wheel drive car with an engine in front of the axle, but a solid part of the car is equipped with quadro-permanent all-wheel drive with a torus and central differential. The mechanical part is quite reliable, with motors up to 300 horsepower. Only the front civic joints are at risk. Their resource is relatively small, up to 150-200 thousand mileage, and the answers often fail even earlier. On front-wheel drive cars, the problem is slightly more acute than on all-wheel drive, but it exists anyway. When tuning any engine up to 280-300 horses and regular fast starts, the transmission begins to show character. The constant velocity joints in front are just the first signs. The carbon shaft, rear gearbox, front intermediate shaft bearings and supports of all transmission and motor elements begin to turn into consumables. However, this is a small price to pay for such an easy tuning of the motor. The gearboxes are pretty strong here, especially if it's a manual transmission. Such boxes can withstand the moment of stock motors for a very long time, if you do not abuse hard shifts. And again, I remind you about dual mass flywheels. After reaching a mileage of 100,000, they need to be replaced or repaired, or changed to custom ones for a VR6 clutch, since they are made in Moscow. With automatic transmission, everything, as usual, is more complicated. On the A5 with different engines and at different times, they installed quite a few variants of automatic machines. All of them are quite reliable during the warranty period and with careful handling, but they do not suffer from an excess of resource. All front-wheel drive cars with motors up to 3.2 liters were equipped with a multitronic variator, a KVL381. Longitudinal Robo DL501, a KOB5, is much more common. This unit is much more solid, they just all 550 nm of torque. It began to be installed in 2009 on all four-wheel drive cars, including the RS5 2.4. Only on the A5 Coupe with the 3.2 FSI engine and the 3.0 TDI diesel engine, they left the usual ZF 6HP28 automatic transmission until 2011. And on cars for the USA and Canada, this automatic transmission was combined with 2.0 TFSI until it was replaced at the post by the new 8-step ZF 8HP45. Now let's take a closer look at all these options. The Multitronic VL381 on the A5 is the successor to the first Audi VL300 CVT, aka O1J, which the company developed in conjunction with Luke. Some parts and layout have remained the same, but overall the design has changed significantly, becoming stronger. VL381 withstands 400 nm of torque and is very different from any weak Jetco in terms of dynamics. True, the O1J's drawbacks remain. The towing, even in short, reliably kills the cones and the chain. Moreover, a motor that has towed at speed can have the same effect if the power supply is lost or the speed drops. And still, the resource strongly depends on the style of movement. Hard acceleration seriously undermines the health of the cones and chains. The design feature is a rather small number of non-resource failures, but on the other hand, the resource of the chain is known in advance, from 100 to 200,000 km, rarely more. The box is relatively simple in design, but the cones and the chain are very expensive, from 80,000 rubles per part. In case of serious damage, it is sometimes cheaper to buy a new variator assembly for 600,000 rubles or use used parts. Most non-resource failures are associated with electronics and well block failures. In general, up to runs of 100-150,000 km with regular oil changes, the box works very reliably if you drive calmly. Through Moscow traffic jams and with regular annealing, you can get to the repair up to 50-60,000 run. Average mileage for the average driver is somewhere in between. The 7-speed robot Astronic DL501 is also in general pretty solid thing. Unlike the transverse DQ200 and DQ250, it is made much more solid. Audi tries to avoid the DSG acronym so as not to de scare off the buyer, but the design is similar to the DQ500, with wet clutches and has many things in common with it. The mechanical part is made with a good margin and can withstand even heavily forced motors and the differential is reliable, but unfortunately the general principle in which all from the clutch kit and the block of clutches and forks gets onto the electronic components is preserved. All with magnetic materials and, and even badly heated affects the operation of all electronic components of mechatronics. Obviously, if you change it more often, every 30,000, at the same time regularly cleaning the magnets, the resource of the box can be significantly increased. But planned repairs with the removal of the box for 160 to 100,000 cannot be avoided. At least rubber elements that have suffered from metal shavings and other wear products will have to be replaced. If drive reverse shifts poorly, gears down hard and jerks appear when stopping, then I have bad news for you. The price of minimum repair starts from 40 
50,000 rubles. Repair kits cost around 15,000, but you are unlikely to do the repair yourself, even if you click the bell bodies of conventional automatic transmission like nuts. A new mechatronic is at least three times more expensive. And do not listen to, to those who talk about the internal oil in the S-Tronic, this is an extremely harmful delusion. It is necessary to change if not once every 30, then certainly at least once every 50,000, plus lower the threshold for turning on the thermostat to 85 degrees, and put the additional external filter in the cooling system. It is not at all necessary to fill in the original oil for 3000 rubles a liter, there is a PB39070, with a price of about 500 rubles. But even when the original oil is filled in and the replacement volume is up to 7 liters, this is the full volume, it's usually draining less. There is a point of in replacing it, because the price of repairing the box is much higher than the price of 3TO. And of course, pay attention to the owner's driving style, because you need to handle the thrust of the DSJ as with a normal manual gearbox. Need to start a little faster uphill and no holding the car uphill. Use the handbrake more actively, it is here with an auto hold specifically to help the s -tronic. Normal automatic transmission, as already mentioned, is mainly found in combination with an atmospheric gasoline engine 3.2 FSI or diesel 3.0 TDI. Until 2009, it could be found with the all engines up to the V8 4.2 FSI on two-door cars, but it is not found on convertibles and liftbacks. The ZF6HP28 is not the most reliable automatic transmission from the existing ones. In any case, the resource of the gas turbine engine and the mechanical part is very limited, and the mechatronic has a lot of trouble, but it is easier to use than a variator and the preselective robot. It withstands harsh exploitation better and is also cheaper and easier to repair. Cheaper, but not cheap. It's just that the average price of repairs is about two times lower, and the refusals rarely happen unexpectedly, but the numbers will still be impressive. In fact, the problems are exactly the same as those of the younger brother in the person of 6HP19, and the methods of struggle are similar. Frequent oil changes, lower operating temperatures, external filter. Unlike the S-Tronic, this automatic transmission almost doesn't suffer from minor malfunctions up to the mileage limit and tolerates traffic jams and difficult driving conditions more easily. Of course, due to slightly worse dynamics and fuel consumption, while well, the price, of course. Buying cars of the first year of production with ZF automatic transmission is not a panacea. I repeat, six-speed gearboxes have a relatively small resource, although they are perfectly repaired. Robots are not so bad, especially if the mileage is not twisted, the oil is clean and changed, and up to this critical 200,000 there is a still a reserve of at least 50,000 runs. The mechanical part of such boxes has a solid resource and easily transfers the tuning of motors, and the mechatronics can be replaced in the assembly with a used one from a more zealous owner or repaired, which is not so difficult to do now. There are both spare parts and specialists. Audi motors of this period are far from being the eternal design that are legendary. The choice of A5 buyers between the relatively practical inline 4 and much more expensive in operation V8 and V6 are usually made in favor of gasoline 1.8 and 2.0 series E8888. Although even if the simple 1.8 and 2.0 TFSI are quite expensive to operate, they have many problems and weaknesses. But a 2-liter engine without serious investments allow you to get up to 300 horsepower, and if you have money, than more. And at the same time, the introduced problems will be less than in cars with 3.0 TFSI or 4.2 FSI from birth. Diesel engines also perform well, but they are not very appropriate on a coupe, so their popularity is low. Common difficulties for all engines are mainly due to the power system, and low crankcase and gearbox, and the very tightly packed cooling system. This is if you do not take into account the fact that the owners of the A5 frankly drive. For street racers, this is a very attractive car. The A5 was equipped with five 1.8 engine options – CGAD, CDHB, CABD, CJEB, and CJEE, as well as five 2.0 engine options – CDNB, CAEA, CDNC, CAEP, CNCD. They differ in details – turbines, degree of boost, environmental standards and control systems, but essentially the motors are the same. By the standards of the latest generation Volkswagen engines, they are not one of the most reliable. They are one of the most reliable. True, this reliability is very conditional, especially for motors manufactured before 2013, when they under the, underwent an upgrade. Problems with the oil lubrication, lubricator replacing the piston group under warranty and after, several piston options and the associated difficulties in general can be solved, but it is better to choose a car that has been replaced by a piston. 
The main problem of these motors is in the old drainage system from the old scrapper ring. Most often it is solved by rimming the holes in the groove and replacing the compression rings of a different elasticity. They are here by the way of an unusual shape, wear out quickly and the laning of the piston on average contributes to the old appetite. Another weak point of these motors can be called a weak timing chain with a resource of 70 120,000 km on average. The old pump chain is no better, which tends to break at high mileage and increased load, for example at high revolutions or cold start. An adjustable oil pump can lose pressure with runs over 120 150,000, which will lead to the death of the crankshaft. Do not count on the emergency pressure lamp, it is here with a surprise. It lights up only when the speed rises and there is almost no pressure. The motor can easily and naturally go to the landfill, and the driver will not even suspect about the upcoming surprise, if he is not inclined to listen to every rustle. The conclusion is simple, after 100,000 it is better to change the oil pump preventively. A pump in a block with a thermostat and even in a plastic case is a common source of leaks, and the cooling system here operates and it increases pressure and temperature, unless the thermostat is replaced with a cold one in advance. As a result, antifreeze leaks are frequent and plastic and rubber elements wear out quickly. All leaks are also regular, the reason is the weakness of the ventilation system and high temperatures. It is necessary to monitor the health of the PCV valve and the safety of all tubes, as they quickly coag and literally creep after 5-6 to six years. Few problems, the intake valves also coag, because there is direct injection. It is difficult to wash off the coke and scuffing on the cylinder mirror and damage to the valves from pieces that have fallen off the frequent are frequent, so a preventive cylinder head bulkhead is just as great idea as replacing the oil pump. Fuel equipment is very expensive and can be a lot of hassle. It is especially unpleasant that many elements do not regularly change separately, for example the roller and pusher of the injection pump or fuel pressure sensors in the rail. The turbine bypass valve is a consumable, especially when forcing, and the ignition coils fly. Many owners try to use red coils from the R8, but it doesn't help much. Fortunately, motor rarely fail Right away, there are strong pistons and good monitoring of parameters, a durable cast iron cylinder block and pistons. But on the other hand, you can spend many days in the service in search of another reason for knocking, underblowing or overheating. Buying an atmospheric V8 3.2 or V8 4.2 is alas not a panacea for the problems of supercharged force. Quite the opposite. The first generation of FSI engines is superly capricious, ranging from the masterpiece timing chain drive with an unpredictable resource from 70 to 200,000 and ending with even more fragile fuel equipment. The V6 series CALA and V8 CAUA CFSA have a similar design, differing only in the number of cylinders. Delicate locks with aerosol coating, seizure marks, a weak old pump and a tendency to coal are common to them. The V8 has more piston seizure problem and both the S5 and RS5 are usually heavily operated. True, their runs are small. In general, these motors are difficult to suspect in practicability. Is that the automatic transmission with 3.2 will be slightly better than the rest of their engines, but this doesn't outweigh all the disadvantages of the design as a whole. The supercharged V6 3.0 TFSI of the CMUA series is practice. In practice, differs little from the older V6 models. The same block of cylinders, the same complex timing, except that the lower limit of the chain resource is higher, closer to 100,000. But the hardened thermal regime and the sticking of the piston group even became the reason for the recall. Many cars have a replaced cylinder block, although usually only the thermostat was changed to a lower temperature one. The boost here, by the way, is not with the turbine, but with the drive compressor, and the boosting capabilities are even higher than that of line force. But the resource of the motor as a whole will be less than that of the cast iron ones, even with the stop power, not to mention the boost. And the price of repairs is several times higher. Diesel engines are not popular, although 3.0 TDI is recommended for purchase. Excellent traction, hydromechanical automatic transmission, everything is not so bad. True, the timing is as complex as that of V6 gasoline engines, but its resource on the low speed and low temperature diesel engine is one and a half times higher, and in no longer presents a problem. But the typical diesel problems common to any modern heavy fuel engine persist. Unless information about the problems of the Audi A5 AT is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.